In this video, we're gonna cover some specific data about freelancers and freelancing in the years 2020 and 2021 to predict whether these trends are gonna continue and what the future of freelancing will be. Beyond that, we'll talk about some qualitative factors that you might not be aware of. It can also help us kind of make these predictions and structure our own career path. Before we get started, my name is Aaron Jack, freelance developer. This channel is all about software development, freelancing, and I'm also the founder of Freemo, the freelance developer bootcamp. So you're gonna say that I'm biased and that's why, you know, I've tried to bring in as much data to this video as I possibly can. So I hope you're ready. Let's get into the first report, which is an objective study contracted by Upwork. To create this study, 6,000 people were surveyed and those people were both freelancers and non-freelance workers at various skill levels. And we can categorize workers in two different classifications, skilled, something like software development design or unskilled, which are more simple tasks like data entry. So the first really surprising stat is that 36% of the people surveyed, which is a sample of the entire US workforce, actually did freelancing last year. So that is to say that one in three people actually did what we would call freelance work in the entire country of the US, which is a lot higher than I actually expected. If we look at who specifically was doing this freelancing, actually a quarter of the total people who freelance were above 55. And of all the people in the workforce in Gen Z, a whole half were actually freelancers. So 50% of people in the younger age demographics, which can kind of maybe signal what is to come, you know, these workforce trends. Okay, now one question I get a lot is when you're starting out freelancing, should you try to go directly to your potential clients or should you use a platform like Upwork or Fiverr? And according to this survey, 91% percent of existing freelancers recommended that people kind of start out with platforms. And I always say platforms are kind of like freelancing with training wheels. Uh, they take care of a lot of the variables and complexity. Companies on there are already qualified or like looking for someone like you. However, on average, the rates can be a bit lower and there's, you know, all these rules you have to follow. So there are trade-offs, but, you know, starting out, they're a really great option and 91% of freelancers agree with me on that one. Right, now let's talk a big concern a lot of people have when freelancing, which is job stability. You might be surprised that the number of people who freelance during COVID stayed the same as the year before at 36% of people in the workforce. I think before the crisis, a lot of people would tell you that, you know, a full-time job is more stable, but I think less and less people are taking that as gospel as, you know, untold numbers of people were laid off last year. In other words, having this greater autonomy over your income actually allows you to stay in control more now, speaking of income, another common concern is that people will leave their job and actually end up making less freelancing. But it turns out that 65% of people who leave, that is two thirds, end up making more. And after leaving, and this part is crazy, a full 60% of people surveyed said they would never go back to a traditional full-time job for any amount of money. So they value their freedom that much. The last thing I'll say about money is one in five freelancers makes over 100,000 a year. And keep in mind, this is including skilled and unskilled freelancers across all different professions. And do keep in mind that software developers have among the highest average incomes. Okay, I've just thrown a ton of stats at you, which you can draw your own conclusions from, but let's talk a bit more about qualitative data, logically walking through why freelancing might dominate more and more in the coming years and how you can use that fact to your advantage. Now I am gonna inject some opinion here, but keep in mind that I've done freelancing from both sides. I've freelanced for people and I've hired many many different kinds of freelancers to do work for me on various projects. Okay, the first thing hiring a freelancer allows you to do is niche down in a very narrow way. Now, what I mean is if you hire a full-time employee, now they might be a designer and they might have one specific specialty. But in my case, if I need like an infographic PDF made, I could go specifically to a guy who only does infographic PDFs all day. And maybe he's been doing this for a few years and I could get like the best infographic PDF ever made. Now, I don't have enough infographics jobs to hire this guy full time, but when I'm able to hire him just for one job, I can just get the expert for exactly what I need. So this is a cool aspect from both angles because you can be like the number one infographics guy and you can also go hire that infographics guy if you need to find him. So the next kind of two-sided advantage is the pay because there are a lot of regulations around you know hiring a full-time employee. You have to like give them insurance, certain benefits and uh, follow the tax structure of having a full-time employee. But there's actually kind of a two-sided benefit here. Employers have to pay less and freelancers also make more. So how exactly is that possible? Well, first the money that might've been allocated towards those benefits can just be converted into raw salary. And it is the case somewhere like San Francisco where contractors will actually make more per hour than the full-time employees at tech companies. Now, beyond that, when you hire a uh, full-time employee, they become a large fixed expense. So you have to pay their 
salary no matter what. And for that like job security reason, you can actually offer them a bit less. You know, when you get a longer term loan, there's actually a lower interest rate, like a mortgage. Now, since a freelancer is more of a variable cost as you need it, hour to hour type person, they're usually gonna command a higher rate per hour even though you know they're getting paid less by a single company over the long term. So these economics kind of make it a win-win in a different way, even though you know on paper you have less job security. Also, just from a quality perspective, put yourself in the shoes of a company. When you hire someone, you're pretty much guessing that they're gonna be a good worker and you're really hoping for that because it can be quite hard to you know get rid of people. Even if you do, you have to spend the time training them and so forth. So it's a big risk on the employer's part. But you know, just imagine you can start someone as freelance, it's like low commitment, and then if they're really good, you can convert them to full time if you wanna do that. So when you think about it, like there's actually no reason not to do that because you can still bring them in, but in a lower risk way. And now finally, here's an obvious one. I mean, teams are remote anyway. When you have full-time employees, you wanna bring them all under one roof. And then, you know, you give everyone their t-shirt or their hoodie, and you have this kind of company culture you're trying to build with your full-time employees. Now, since locations are interchangeable anyway, to some extent, people are becoming more interchangeable too which sounds bad, but it's actually, it's, it's good because you have more liquidity in the job market and you have more opportunities that are open instead of every job being like constantly filled. And of course, there's a ton more we can get into, like the fact that offices are remote, um, there's overseas restrictions with full-time employees and not with freelancers, and the list goes on. But you know, let's just wrap it up there. But I think at this point, you get the idea. There's kind of an asymmetric upside, a lot of factors that are kind of driving the freelance movement forward and not too many against it. Anyway, it's kind of become my mission to promote freelancing as a means to get people more self-sufficient, uh, both in charge of their income, their location, and you know their career in general, and being able to take that whatever way they want to. So anyway, I hope you learned something from this video, or at least got a little bit more motivated to try out freelancing. Anyway, with all that said, consider sticking around for more videos like this, and I'll talk to you soon.